All right, so turn with me to Ephesians chapter 6. We're at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4. See, Ephesians 6, 4 says, And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Amen. So we took a break last week, but the week prior, we looked at what it meant to be a parent, what it meant to um, to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, um, and and I basically laid out a ground uh, like a a structure of how I want to do this. You know, want to start off with love, and then nurture, and then admonition. Okay, and then go round it out. What I want to do regarding love is. Um, I want us to talk about what it means to love our children, uh, which is the root of all other duties that we have towards them. I do want this to be interactive, as usual. Um, but I want to, and when it talks about, what I want to focus on is loving our children and protecting them. Um, it is something that I think as parents, you know, we, we think about a lot. And I want to address some of the dangers and pitfalls as well um, in protecting our children that um, parents tend to be blind to or do not give too much consideration towards. And again, if you don't have children, this is still applicable to you um, because there's a, you'll, as you'll see, there's a lot here that applies, um, especially if you desire to have children. In the future. So I want to start off with what it means to love, right? What it means to love our children. And many times when we love, you know, we, we express our love to our children in many ways. Parents express it differently from one set of family to another. Some are a little more stern, some are not. But there is, um, there's something that tends to happen um, among parents that they think they're demonstrating love but it tends to end up harming a child. And that is when you dote on a child. What does it mean to dote on a child? Doting. Doting on a child. What does that mean? Jess? Spoiling them. Spoiling them. Good. Good. What else? Show admiration. Okay. What kind of admiration? Adoration. Adoration. Good. Just like we make them... Uh, much important because it's like the center of your life. Yes. yes. Good. So all these responses are correct. Is when you elevate your child upon a pedestal where they can do no wrong, you give them everything they want. They, if they whine, you give it to them. If they ask, you give everything. You just and 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 you set you will set aside everything and anything to appease them, to give to them, and. I will tell you that right now, that is not love. That is idolatry. It is a sin. And we, as parents, must not dote on our children. It is, to, is, it is a lavish and excessive attention that we bring to them. And usually parents don't discipline children when they dote on them. Because they can do no wrong. Um, discipline becomes practically non-existent. Correction is withheld, and a child is spoiled. And when that little child that's doted on grows up, he will be your worst enemy. He will grow up to hate you. And he will grow up to do a lot of harm to himself and to people around him. It is, it is not a good thing to dote on children Parents, as their children grow up and they're being doted or spoiled, will even forego church attendance. They're, they will ignore their prayer time. They will ignore family worship because their child doesn't want to do it. Because the child's throwing a tenter, temper tantrum. I don't want to do this. And it's okay, okay. Then we won't do it. When children act this way and the parent foregoes their duties towards that child, you're not loving your child. And so just be aware of that. Just let that be a warning 
not not to fall into into that pitfall, that trap, because that is not love. Um, as parents, even though we don't like to discipline our children, it is a duty that we must do. We must discipline our children. We must administer correction, because in the end, it is for their good. When it's done properly, it is for their good. So just be aware of that. True love is actually sacrificial love. It's where the parents will provide for their children, where the parents will work and labor hard to ensure their family is taken care of. Where fathers, maybe there's a promotion that, that is being offered to you as, a, as you know, to elevate you in the company. But with that promotion comes longer hours at work. Yes, a higher pay raise. Yes, maybe guaranteed bonuses an extra week of vacation. But now you have to work more hours and maybe you have to travel more often. Would that be detrimental to your family? That is something you have to take into consideration because it may be. And if it is, then you, must, you may need to sacrifice that promotion for the benefit of your family. Okay? You don't want to be an absent parent because of work. Um, wives, your children need their fathers, right? You, as a wife, cannot be both mother and father. Your children need a father, okay? And so if that means foregoing a promotion for the benefit of your family so that you're, you don't become estranged from your family, then you forego that promotion. Um... Then there is, you know, the mother uh, tends to be the one who nurtures more than the father. Um, usually, moms are at home and are taking care of their ch children. Um, but yet the father is always going to be the one that's going to be held accountable for the upbringing of the child. And this includes their education, right? The, child, the father is responsible to ensure the child is properly educated. Okay? The father has to, be, uh, is, has to be sure that the child be properly nurtured. Okay? Now, you know, I started off about doting. I spoke about that very briefly. I'm speaking very briefly about sacrificial love and your job. But I want to speak more and more, more focus the rest of this about protecting our children and what it means to be protectors as parents. Okay? So if you have any questions up to this point, please feel free to ask. I'm going to go through this real quick. High level. Um, it's going to be it's very high level, I know, but any questions so far? Any interaction? No? Pretty straightforward. Okay. This part I want to focus on because of many things that have been happening, um, you know, the past few years up to this, you know, to this uh, present time. And it goes without saying that there are many predators that seek to bring harm to our children, <laughs> and that as parents, we cannot afford to be naive of the dangers that lurk from people, mostly men that seek to harm our children. And so parents, <clears throat> I want you to beware of the flatterer. Beware of the person that flatters too much. Who puffs you up with so many sweet words of affection towards you and towards your child. You will know when it's excessive. Right? A flatterer tends to act like one who dotes on you. A flatterer dotes on you. That's what they do. That's their purpose. Is to lure you into a sense of security that it's okay to be around this person because he likes me. Look how he talks about me. They sing your praises. Be aware of those kinds of people. They may be after something and it's usually and most of the time to harm you to harm you 
and your family. That's what flatterers do. They seek to harm you. Be aware of that. Be careful of that. Be, a, be suspicious when people have an excessive curiosity of your children. Especially if you don't really know them. They're asking too many questions about your children. Especially our young ones. Be, be, be push back. Push back. Okay, I, you don't really know me. What? Why are you asking me all these questions about my children? Okay, be aware of that. Be cautious of such men. As parents, it is very wise in your love and protection of your children, where you live, you know, to even, on occasion, check the sex registry, sex offender registry, to see who's in your neighborhood. Find out who's in your neighborhood. Know their faces and sense if you go to the parks and such. If they're your neighbor, you need to know who they are so that you keep them away from your family, that they stay away from your family. It's good to know these things. In that church, and especially at church, it's a place where we tend to lower our guard, right? We tend to, um, you know, put everything at ease. Eric, you know, we know each other. Everyone is present here. We basically know each other. But it is a place that people tend to lower, lower their guard. Even schools, public school buildings, used to be a place like that until the rise of school shooters. It used to be a place that parents with all confidence and faith would drop off their children knowing that nothing bad would happen to them. But that illusion of security is shattered, right, in our country. But even at church, we must be watchful over our children to protect them from any possible harm from unscrupulous people that come, supposedly seeking easy pickings, okay? Beware of those men that come they really don't know you, and usually they're single. Sorry, not trying to pick them out, but usually this is the profile. That they'll go to the guys and they'll speak so much theology to you, and then they'll go to the women and speak so much about you know what women do, and then they have this excessive attention to the children. And what they're doing, they're feeling it out. Who's watchful and who isn't? Who is easy to get over on? And they, after a while, will figure it out. And they'll know who they can pull the, the wool over their eyes to get close to their family to harm them. Okay? I'm not saying this is, you know, this is not... The, all single people are like this, okay? I don't want to put it that way. But that's a profile of certain predators that come. Just be aware of that, okay? It is not, and I mean, there's married people that do this as well, okay? There may be, and I'm not pointing out, again, I'm not pointing anybody out here, but there are times there are couples that come to churches who are desperate to have children find ways to get one. You have to be aware of that too. Okay? It happens. It happens. Who can I, whose child can I take? Because we can't have one. So you got to be aware of that too. Okay? These things happen. The world tends to think that Christians are taught to allow other people to run over them. To walk all over them to turn the cheek and let violence fall upon them without seeking justice. That's how the world looks at Christians, right? Some of us who are at work have had this happen to us, right? Oh, you're a Christian. We're going to give you this guy to work with you, this bum. He's lazy. Nobody likes him. But because nobody wants to work with him, we're going to stick him with you because you're a Christian and you got to suck it up, Right? Or maybe you're in college or in the military. Nobody wants this guy in their dorm, in their room with you, because he snores, because he's this, because he's that. But you know what? You're a Christian, 
So you're going to suck it up and have them in your room. Right? Because the world thinks they can walk all over Christians. And there will be people coming to churches that will say things like this. You're supposed to be good to us. Even though we offend you, you have to turn the other cheek. Right? And they take advantage of what Christ teaches us to try to harm us. And we need to be aware of this. We need to be on alert against such people. And as covenanters, we have a history of protecting our own. And, and if you know anything about the covenanters, the history of our church, if anyone comes to seek violence against us, we'll learn that we have a sword ourselves with us. And that in most Reformed Presbyterian churches and congregations, if you were to go into one of those churches to try to bring heat, you're going to be met by heat. Because a lot of our men are packing. But the Bible nowhere teaches that we are to allow or let alone let violent men walk all over us to harm us without employing self-defense. The scriptures are very clear that we have the right to self-defense and we are to protect our own. So parents, even at home, if anyone tries to seek harm to your family, you have every right to self-defense. You have every right to protect your family against violent men. If they're breaking into your home, you have every right to take them out. Okay? And that is part of loving your parent, your children as parents. That is part, that's what it means to love your family, is to protect your family from the hands of violent men. If anyone seeks to bring imminent harm to your family, the Bible allows you to exercise self-defense to protect your family. We are not uh, Mennonites or Amish or whatever that allow violence to happen to our families. So I want you as parents to be aware, to be protective of your children, to be protective of your family, to be aware of potential predators. It is important for you to be watchful. Don't be paranoid either. Don't be um, overly suspicious of everyone. But I don't want you to be naive either. either. Don't be naive. Don't be paranoid. All right? We are to, hey, when people come to the church, we greet them. We receive them warmly. We interact with them. We get to know them. And men, especially you men, I want you to understand this. The women have something you don't have. Intuition. They can pick up on vibes that other people give off that you don't pick up on. And when, you're, when the women in the church are saying, hey, there's something off on this guy, listen to them. Because they tend to pick up on things that we don't as men. Okay? I want you to understand that. And children, especially the small ones, the young ones, you know, you know, I mean, I know some of you parents, when I have them back there in Bible study, and they raise their hand, they want to tell a story, some of you are dreading what they're going to say, right? I know you do. I see it in your faces. But you know what? <laughs> It's a good thing, too, because at that age, if they sense something is off, they're going to tell you. They will tell you. Believe the children. Believe the children. Okay? Now, on this line of talking, I'm talking more now, I was talking more specifically about when people come here, right? Because things happen. But I also want you to know that as parents, as you are 
you know, uh, uh, especially when you're a newer family, you're going to seek ways, you're going to seek teachings to help you raise your children. You're going to go out there and you're going to look for, okay, what is the best way to be a parent? How do I raise my child? How do I be a good father, a good mother, a good husband, a good wife? And you're going to come across different teachings out there, even within the reform, reform circles, that will try to teach you how to be a good, godly, reformed family. Now, I want you to be aware and exercise a lot of discernment about these things. Even if a lot of well-known pastors sing the praises of certain men or programs on how to raise a family, do not let down your discernment. Because I've seen a lot of these men and programs that have been touted by big-name reform people bring a lot of harm to families. And the and the peers of my children have been victimized by these programs. And I want to highlight one, which is Bill Gothard and his Institute of Basic Life Principles, who was very popular in our reform circles for a long time. And they taught this, you know, what they call the Christian reform methodology of raising children. Very widely accepted in Reformed Presbyterian circles. And those children are now young adults. And many of them are coming forward with stories on how their parents took these teachings by Bill Gothard and harmed them. And I want you, I'm bringing this up because as parents, we are to love and to nurture and educate our children. And we need to be cautious on how we do this. If you don't know who Bill Gothard is, maybe you've known one of his more famous prodigies or families, and those are the Duggars. They have 20 children or so. And look at how messed up they have turned out to be. A lot of Christians are touting them as a godly example. But you know what? These, these, these people come across and they say, listen, what I'm going to teach you is what the church has taught for hundreds of years. And I'm going to show you from the Bible that this is the way. And that's how they hook you. They'll use words that you'll find maybe in old reform writings of the Puritans. Like courtship. To hook and, and Bill Gothard and his institute was some of this. They, you know, they um, were pushing courtship, the courtship movement, big time. They called dating worldly and satanic. They would um, go so far as to say that the father has every say and the utmost authority over their children, even to the exclusion. Or the pastor of the church. The pastor can't say nothing to their children. They have. They will say that. They would teach, and you know, his disciples would teach his his, his um, those that were promoting Gothard would teach certain things that the father has such an absolute authority over their children that even when they're adults, the child must submit in all things, even a single adults. Now, it doesn't matter. They are still to submit in everything. That being an adult child means nothing. And there's been this sickness even behind the courtship movement that has brought much harm to young people. The whole subject of finding a spouse, I would treat that at a separate time. But suffice it to say, this drive to be, to push for courtship. Sorry, Pastor. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know if you mentioned it when you were talking about his authority teaching, but even when the women get married, their father is still their authority, and the husband and the wife have to submit both all things to the father of, you know, their fathers or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I didn't bring that up, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. so you see the, the abuse that goes on there, right? That the spiritual abuse that goes on there. And, and you can say this about the courtship thing. Um, there's a lot of, I mean, it sounds biblical, but it's not behind courtship. And, and it's led to a lot of disastrous outcomes. Gother would say that, you know, if you didn't, um, if you didn't go along with his views, it was because you were worldly or because you didn't understand the scriptures. There's an underlying legalism to this teaching where hyper-patriarchy emerges. It's like what you just brought up. Um, they will say that if your adult single child, we're talking about an adult over 21, wants to go away to college, that that child is rebellious. Bucking the authority of the father. That that child cannot go to college or go away if the father says no. Because she's rebellious or he's rebellious and must be disciplined. That there is no respect for an adult. There is no respect in this system for an adult child. The, the uh, authority that the, that they would teach that the father has over the family is spiritually abusive. It is like a thumb just holding the entire family down. I'm the authority and I'm like God to you. It's basically what they taught. And there's been a huge fallout from his teaching. A lot of people, a lot of young people have left the faith because of this excessive control and abuse. And we need to be aware of this. Uh, the American Vision Forum is another system that is, has turned out to be, to have brought a lot of harm to families. I want you to be aware of these things. And so parents and seeing to love our children we must navigate a host of potholes and minefields, and it's not an easy task. We contend with the worldly philosophy which teaches anything but true love. We contend with the fallen nature which asserts itself in twisting our practice of loving our children that tends to bring harm. And there are a lot of erroneous and false teachings within some parts of the church that also bring harm. And we need to be aware of that. We need to vet these things. You know, there's nothing new under the sun. And we need to, when we're, you know, being taught a system, hey, this is how you're to raise your child. And it's clearly a system. And usually you'll know, right? They're going to be a parachurch organization. They're going to set themselves up as an institute or as, a, as, a, as some kind of movement that's outside of the church. And all they do is just pump out all these things about how to be a father, how to be a man, how to be a woman, how to be a mother. And they're so focused on this. And they interlace the scriptures with their teachings, which they're going to say are old teachings. But it's really their teachings. And you need to be aware of these things. So you need to be aware of these things. So let me give you some guidance on this. As parents, seeing to raise your child to be a loving parent to your children, be in constant prayer for your family. It goes without saying, but I need to say it anyway. You need to be in prayer for your family each day. When you're looking up on the internet on how to raise your child or guide your child, if that Whatever you read and find is associated with a parachurch organization, use discernment. A lot of discernment. I don't care if they're throwing the words reform, the Puritan, William Gouge all over the place. Use discernment. 
Pray for wisdom. The Lord says, you have no wisdom because you don't ask for it. Pray for it. Pray for wisdom in raising your child. Look to your own parents as for guidance. Your parents raised you. And you turned out okay. Yeah, okay. Some of you may have more bruises than others. But the Lord has, has you here. Not everything you're going to imitate from your parents. But you know what? You know now the mistakes your parents made. Learn from them and stay away from them. Uh, stay away from those mistakes. Be clear. Don't stay away from your parents. <laughs> stay away from the mistakes they made. You know the mistakes they made. So don't repeat them. Right? But you know the things they did that were good. Imitate those. Be Bereans. Be Bereans scrutinize all things, all teachings. Question these ideologies from parachurch organizations. Okay? Use the sermon, exercise wisdom. And ask yourself, why is it after 500 years, is this parachurch organization just now teaching something that the church has missed? 500 years. Get asked that. Get asked that. Why is this institute teaching that this is the role of the Father? Well, where has that role been taught? Why is it not being taught or hasn't been taught? Use the sermon. Find out. And if it seems to be excessive or abusive, stay away from it. No matter how much praise, you know, a celebrity pastor is given. Just be cautious. Pray. Use the sermon. Pray for wisdom. Lean on those people that you can trust that are close to you. Your family members. Maybe you have an uncle that was a excellent parent excellent father learn from him maybe you have an auntie that was an excellent mother learn from her and then apply the biblical principles that you know from scripture to that you have your hand up you sure all right so um another thing is you yourself be a right and godly example from the word of God on how to be a parent to your children. Pray with them. Um, read the scriptures with them. Help to have them memorize the scriptures. Do the catechism with them. Instruct them. Okay? Instruct them from the word of God. You don't need paratorch organizations to teach you how to be a parent. You really don't. I mean, for a long time, the church didn't have those parachurch organizations telling the church how to be a church. Telling parents in the church how to be parents. Most parachurch organizations, a lot of them, just know this. They're in it for the money. Okay? They, they really are. They want, they want to be their own authority. They don't want to be under the authority of the church. You gotta ask yourself why. Why? I mean, if you look more into Bill Gother, he didn't want to submit to the church. He wanted to be his own authority. Why? Well, for the most part, we know now why. I'm telling you, the church is where we build up one another in the faith. Parachurch organizations are just that, para. Not alongside, but they don't want to be underneath the church. Not all of them are like this. But a good number of them. This is America. We're capitalists. Remember that. And don't think for a second that Christian men won't be so greedy for money that they're going to fleece the church. Because they do. They do. And be aware of that. As you begin to homeschool your children, you're going to see this. 
How many companies are out there that now have this whole industry of homeschooling and they're charging you an arm and a leg to educate your child? Just remember that. Just because they're Christian doesn't mean they're Christian. A lot of them are in it for the money and they're fleecing you. Just be aware of that. Use the sermon. Be wise. Use the scriptures. Question these things, okay? To protect your family, to protect your children, okay? Any questions? Comment. Comment. Doug Wilson, much anything you've written on the subject? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you've been leaning on Doug Wilson for your parenting and manly skills, burn it. Okay. Burn it. I mean, I mean, now they're, I mean, somebody associated with him is teaching that, that you need to know how to decorate the inside of your house in a godly way because that teaches everyone walks into your house how godly you are. I mean, it's like, I mean, come on, it's legalism to an extreme, okay? Just be aware of that. And there's more I can say, but if you're going to homeschool, we might have no more time, but let me tell you this about homeschooling as well. Parents. I know that public schools are what they are. They're a shamble, especially here in this city. Private schools, very expensive. So the other alternative is to homeschool. But parents, homeschool is a good thing to educate your children. We do not turn homeschooling into a monastery. You understand what I mean by that? If you shelter your children so they are totally naive of the outside world, you are going to harm them. Because when they grow up to either go to a college or to a trade school or to just get into the workplace and you didn't prepare them, they're going to be eaten up. They're going to be easy picking. You, I mean, we, it is common knowledge that homeschool children that go to college are the first ones to get harmed. Because they're, they, went not, they went in there very naive of the ways of the world. Homeschool, great. Monastery and over sheltering your parents, your children, that is not nurturing your child. You need to prepare them for the world. You need to prepare them for what's out there. Because they will fall prey if you don't. You cannot shelter your child forever. That's doting on them. Bring it back to full circle. If you're sheltering your child or your house becomes a monastery, you're doting on your child. Stop it. Prepare them for the world. Because we are in the world. And how are they going to learn not to be of it if you're not preparing them? Prepare them. Because if you don't, they will make poor husbands and poor wives. And your grandchildren will be further harmed because you failed to prepare them for the world. Okay. I'm going to end it there.